beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Come, and you will see. And we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Well, I have learned that there is two types of people in this world. There are people who enjoy mornings. Anybody, is that you? Are you a morning person? Okay, you would fall in the category of my husband up at... I don't even know what hour, 5 a.m., making too much noise, disturbing the rest of us. All right, there's a special place in heaven for y'all. Uh, what about the people who are my people enjoy slow mornings? Like, don't talk to me for the first 30 minutes. Anybody? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that you are here. Uh, I, I enjoy slow mornings. I'm not a quick waker upper, and I enjoy slowly waking up and then going to the coffee pot, pouring myself a hot cup of coffee with silence. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, okay? Pouring the coffee, and uh, a couple years ago, my husband bought me a vanity. It's like a makeup vanity that you sit down, and, and that's where you get ready. And this has become a religious part of my routine, okay? I get up slowly, pour my coffee, come back to my vanity, tell Alexa to play some nice music, worship, of course, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get the vibe set right. Like this is all a part of my routine. And a couple years ago, after my husband had bought me this vanity, it was a couple months after using it. And one day I was getting ready, doing my normal aesthetic morning vibe. And as I'm sitting there uh, getting ready, I notice that one of the chair, one of the legs on the chairs is a little bit wobbly. All right, so I didn't think too much about it, because how many y'all know when life be life in, the last thing you want to think about is that wobbly chair, right? Like, I'm like, I got things to do. I can't think too much about this. And so I proceeded to sit on the chair, and I had found ways of how to kind of shift my weight to make sure that it wasn't on that side where it was wobbly. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting ready. I'm like, okay, this is, this is a little much. And then after, uh, you know, a few weeks went by, there was one particular morning where I was getting ready curling my hair, doing my normal vibe, and I had the curling iron in my hair. <laughs> and as I reached for the hairspray, that leg snapped off. <laughs> I fell over, the curling iron's like this, smacking me in the face. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world just happened? And my husband runs in, he's like, are you okay? I'm like, I think so. <laughs> like, what just happened? And I proceed to tell him, you know, like, yeah, this chair, the leg's not, and he, you know, the whole story. And so he looks at the leg and he's like, oh, don't worry, Chelsea, I can fix this. How many of y'all got husbands that think they can fix anything? <laughs> like, praise God, Brandon most times can. I really do appreciate that about him. But so he goes and he gets the drill and he gets that leg back in. And sure enough, a couple months later, here comes the wobble again. <laughs> Okay, so this happened ongoing. I can't even believe I'm admitting this to you this morning. To this day, I have that same chair. <laughs> and uh, as of the last couple months, there's been a little bit more weight that's put on this chair. <laughs> I'm pregnant, if you didn't know, all right? <laughs> Some of you are like, did she just say that? <laughs> Uh, and so finally, you know, the same thing happened. This has been ongoing, an ongoing issue for two years. And finally... Brandon, this happens again. He's like, don't worry, babe. I got some new super glue that's really going to get this going. I don't even know how much. Honestly, we probably could have just bought a new chair for how much he, money he spent trying to fix this old chair, right? And so uh, finally, he comes to me, says he can fix the chair. And I took a moment and said, husband of mine whom I love and adore and treasure and appreciate, I think it's time for a new chair. <laughs> 
I don't think we can keep fixing this one. I, I really think it's time that we get a new chair. And some of us this morning who are in here look like how I looked on this chair. Everything looks fine on the outside, everything aesthetically looks nice, but once pressure is applied, once life starts happening, you start to feel a little bit wobbly. And you're trying to do the same things over and over and over, wondering why your chair is not secure. And can I suggest to you is that there is no temporary fix that could fix a wobbly chair. There's no temporary fix that can fix our life when we feel unstable. The only place and the only person that will bring true security, true new life is Jesus. And some of you don't need a temporary fix. We Americans love our temporary fixes. <laughs> We love going to the things thinking if I could just crack the code, if I could just get this right, then I will be secure. And can I suggest to you this morning, you don't need a new fix, you need Jesus. You need a new chair, a new identity, new hope, new joy, new encouragement this morning. And the man that we're gonna look at this morning wanted a temporary fix. He, he had built this belief system that something else could save him. And God doesn't wanna just give us an easy fix. He wants to give us a new life, a new name. I'm excited to jump in the text this morning, but before we do that, I just wanna take a moment and say welcome to church this morning. We're so glad that you are here with us. Wasn't Easter awesome? Last week, I mean, yeah, like 240-something salvations. I, gosh, I, I think about that. Those are real people who, who for the first time said yes to the Lordship of Christ. And I'm grateful to be a part of a church that celebrates that. Uh, for those who are new here, we are in the middle of our John series, going through the book of John, looking at uh, how Jesus performed miracles. So before we jump into a text, this would be a great time to grab your Mark It Up notes, uh, if you have them with you. And we're gonna go through the text this morning and take a look at this man who was on his wobbly chair, who was looking for a counterfeit, looking for an easy fix. Let's read the text together. John chapter five, and we're gonna start in verse one. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool which is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. So I want us to really Picture this before we get into more of the text. Here we see this pool, okay? And it's surrounded by five different entrances. Scripture says five covered colonnades. Other translations say five doorways or five porches. And so there's this pool with five different entrances into it. It goes on to say here a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed, one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. So we see this pool with five different entrances and at this pool, a great number of people with disabilities were lying around this pool. Now the legend was, was that once a year an angel would come and stir the waters. And whoever got into the pool first when the water was stirred would receive their healing. And so people were there waiting to get in the pool, hoping that it would make them well. People were waiting around to see if they could be healed. And, and while everyone's partying at the festival, that's why Jesus was there, that's what the beginning of the scripture tells us, uh, instead of going to the festival, which is why he was there, where do we find Jesus? Find him at the pool of Bethesda the place where the sick lie, at the place where most people I'm sure would want to stay away from, the, the place where people were lying there helpless and this is where we find our Messiah. And, and I read that and just think, 
That is really good news for you and I. (laughs) That Jesus comes to our mess, that the places that most people are repulsed by are the places where he says, no, 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 come to me. (laughs) I got you. And then scripture brings us to this man who'd been laying there for 38 years. 38 years. A man had been laying there waiting to find his healing. 38 years of being on a wobbly chair. That was a long time. 38 years of thinking patterns, 38 years of lying there. He wanted a temporary fix. He really believed that if I just lay here long enough, if I can just time it right when the water bubbles up, then I will find my healing. This is all he had known. This is what he built his life on. This man had put his faith in the water of the pool. And the truth is, is that you and I put our faith in things all of the time that we think will save us. If I could just get this promotion at work or get this really important person to notice me, then I'll be made whole. If I could just make a certain amount of money or just see a certain number on the scale, then I'll feel complete. If I just keep hitting this bottle, maybe it'll numb me enough to give life some meaning. If I could just get it right, I know, if I can just do everything perfectly, be a moral person, then I will be saved. And the reality is, is that there is no temporary fix. There is no counterfeit that's going to bring you wholeness. There's no miracle pool or magic trick that is going to make you well. Friends, this morning I'm here to tell you that Jesus is not a temporary fix. He is the only fix. He is the only place, the only person, the only one who can bring you what you've been searching for. Some of you maybe for decades searching for something, waiting for something. And here we see Jesus showing up, saying, I am the living water. I am the one who can make you well. I am the one who can give you what you've been searching for. Scripture goes on to say that when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he'd been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you wanna get well? This man was not laying there, increasing his faith for a miracle. In fact, throughout this whole story, this man doesn't even acknowledge Jesus. And yet, scripture says that Jesus saw him. Meaning that even when you and I put our faith in the wrong things, even when you and I are searching for these counterfeits and these miracle pools, Jesus still sees you. He sees me. He sees us and he comes to us and he asks us this question, do you want to get well? What an interesting question to ask someone who's been laying there 38 years. (laughs) I mean, really, let's just think about this in the natural for a moment. Like, that'd be like asking a sick person at a hospital hey, do you want to get well? No, I just like hanging out here. (laughs) Like really, it's such an interesting thing that Jesus was asking, but Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. Jesus knew that this question would force this man to come face to face with where he had put his belief, where he had put his faith, to come terms with the fact with that he was on a wobbly chair. And this man laying there imagining, you know, like, what do you mean? Of course, of course I want to be made well. Well, you would think that's what he would say, but we're gonna look later what he would say. So Jesus says, do you wanna get well? And I think the question of this whole passage, the whole point of this whole story for us today, wherever you're at in your walk with God, maybe you've been walking with the Lord a really long time. We're glad you're here. Maybe you're here this morning and You've never made Jesus Lord. We're so glad you're here. But the question for us this morning is this, do you want to be made well? I 
want us to sit with that for a moment. The King James translation says it like this. Do you want to be made whole? I mean, really think about that for a moment. Do you really want to be restored? Do you really want to be free? Do you really want a miracle? This man continues to say, sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me get in the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. (laughs) Jesus asks this man, do you want to get well? And he doesn't respond with, of course. (laughs) He doesn't respond with, yes. He responds with, I have no one to help me in the pool and someone always gets down ahead of me. How many times do you and I look like this man? I'd love to walk in freedom. I'd love to walk in confidence. I'd love to be who God called me to be, but you don't know what I've been through. I'd love to do these things, but someone always gets ahead of me. And and those things may be true, I, I, I don't know, but can I tell you that God knows? God sees where you're at. God saw this man where he was at. And in this moment, this man was revealing his belief system. He was revealing that he was on a wobbly chair. Now, to be fair, this is all this man had known. He didn't know there was another way. And some of you in here need to hear that today. There is another way. There is another fix. There is something that is permanent, that is everlasting, that will give you what you've been searching for. Jesus asked this man, do you want to be made well? Do you want a new chair, a new life, secure? And then Jesus said to him, said to this man, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. (laughs) Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. I love scripture. I love Jesus. Okay, like, like, just think about this. The God who breathed the planets into place, the God who created everything, could have just glanced at this man and made him whole. He, he really could have just touched him and then walked away. But he loved this man too much to let him stay in the condition he was in. He knew that this would require a partnership together to get up, pick up your mat, and walk. This man put his faith in something that could not save him. And some of us are here this morning crippled by fear, crippled by anxiety, crippled with addiction, crippled with bitterness, crippled with insecurity, bound, some of you, for decades to the same pain The same thing that happened 30 years ago. And and I'm not saying those things aren't real. I'm not saying that what happened was right. But what I am saying this morning is by the grace of God, get up. Get up. When we accept Jesus as Lord, we realize that salvation is a free gift. And it is. The only one who could save us is Jesus, which is amazing. But sometimes I think we just stop there. I think there's a lot of Christians, a lot of believers who have saved souls but wasted lives. If Jesus is Lord of your life, if Jesus really did what he said that he did, he has the power, he has the strength to break the stronghold of man approval in your life. He has the strength to break addiction of lust, of bitterness, and he wants you this morning to know that the freedom that he died for is available to you. That's not in question here. That freedom is available. The question is, do you want it? (laughs) Do you want to be free? Do you want to be made whole? 
Jesus says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Not find another self-help book. (laughs) Not try another Jordan Peterson podcast. Not hit a different substance. Not try go to therapist after therapist after therapist. And I believe in therapy. I go to therapy. But a therapist cannot save you. Not search for another counterfeit, another miracle pool, another temporary fix. You can be made well this morning, but it will require your partnership with him. Because God will let you stay on your mat as long as you want to. He won't force you to get up. He won't strong arm you into finding wholeness. And I think it's important to say this this morning is I'm not up here suggesting that getting up is easy. I'm not up here pretending like I know what you've been through. Some of you in here have seen some things. You've experienced things that would probably bring all of us to our knees. You've had things done to you that are not fair. You've been through real heartache, real despair, real disappointment. And I'm not saying that when you say yes to Jesus, all of that goes away. But what I am saying today, by the grace of God, you can get up. (laughs) You can be made whole. And I think sometimes if we're honest, we get really good at licking our wounds. (laughs) Well, we get really good at listing all the reasons why we can't. And Jesus is here this morning saying, yes, you can. You can be made whole. Because what's the alternative to not getting up? Laying there? Another 38 years? What the enemy meant for evil. What the enemy meant to keep you bound, to keep you dead, to keep you bogged down by the grip of sin. When Jesus Christ entered the picture, you are free. (laughs) You are no longer bound. Slave, sin is no longer your master. You're no longer a slave to sin. That when you accept Jesus by the grace of God, you will be made well. And as I was studying for this passage, I I couldn't help but notice what Jesus says in between get up and walk. Like getting up and walking, that was the miracle that Jesus performed. He got up and walked. But what an interesting thing he says in between get up and walk. He says, pick up your mat. Pick up your mat. What an interesting thing to say to this man who'd been laying on this mat for 38 years in the dirt. And I just, I kept thinking about it. I couldn't understand it. So, you know, I did what most of us would do when we have a theological question. I called Pastor Brian. (laughs) And I'm like, hey, what's the deal with this mat? (laughs) Like, why is this even in scripture? And you know, Brian says to me, well, sometimes not everything's that deep. <laughs> sometimes there's it's just pick up your mat and go. And I'm like, no, no, no. I need you to get one of your fancy commentaries and tell me what's the deal with this mat. And do you know what the mat symbolized? It symbolized that he is never coming back here. <laughs> And I can just visualize this man rolling up his mat. The same place where he had experienced despair, disappointment, anger. And what Jesus, he could have told him to leave it there. 
He could have told him, just, just leave it behind. And sometimes we think when we say yes to Jesus that that means it, it leaves behind what we've been through. But no, he told him to take it with him. You're just gonna carry it differently. And it's gonna signify what I've done in your life. Because when we carry our mat, it tells a message that I have been through some stuff, but I am not what I have been through. I have been sick. I have been bound by the pit of hell, but when I met Jesus, when I encountered the grace of God by the spirit that lives in me, I will walk. I will pick up what once had me dead. I will pick up what once had me bound, but guess what? I am never coming back here. Jesus tells this man to walk. Walking requires movement. <laughs> and notice that Jesus didn't tell this man to get up and sprint. <laughs> he, he didn't tell this man to get up and run. Jesus knew that this man was coming out of a very hard season, a very long 38 years of being in the same place. And he says, hey, get up, take up your mat and walk, and some of you need to hear this morning that you just have to keep moving forward. You just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other, even if you're tired, even if it feels like you're coming out of a hard place, keep contending for your marriage that feels over. Keep standing in the gap for your adult children until they declare Jesus is Lord. Keep taking your thoughts captive and making them obedient to Christ. Keep overcoming the power of temptation because the power that lives in you is greater. You are able to be free. You are able to be made whole. You are able to have a new chair because of what Christ has done. Scripture tells us that the old is gone and the new has come. You are free this morning. Scripture goes on to say this, at once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he walked. At once this man was cured. Meaning that his healing was immediate. What was different between one day and the next for this man? He met Jesus. And the healing was not partial. It was not like he only healed one leg and not the other. At once he was cured. It was immediate. And this man obeyed. He caught up. He rolled up his mat and he walked. And I just want to encourage you this morning to live in such a way that the work of the cross is enough to free you. To live in such a way that you are able to be free. <laughs> and, and I understand it's an ongoing work becoming like Christ, okay? Till the day we die, we're gonna be walking. <laughs> We're gonna be crucifying our flesh and, and becoming more like Jesus. That's, what I'm, that's not what I'm saying here. But what I am saying here is that what Jesus did on the cross now gave you the ability to be well. What Jesus, the price that he paid, now you have the power to be made free. If you want to be. <laughs> Do you want to be made well? Because when you say yes to Jesus, you now have the freedom to choose that. And this is the stuff we gotta be telling ourselves every single morning. Not our positive affirmations or our music that we play, all of that, I'm not saying that all of that's bad, but what I am saying is there is power in scripture, there is power in saying that sin has no dominion over me, that I am no longer a slave, I'm a son or daughter, and I'm gonna walk in that today. Even if it means every minute I'm making my thoughts obedient, then in the name of Jesus, do that. You're able to be free this morning. The question is, do you want to be? 
And if I'm just really honest, because we're all just going to be honest here this morning, I look at seasons of my life, I can see seasons where I wanted to be well and seasons where I liked my mat more than I liked freedom. And by the way, this mat really caused an uproar. Like later in the story, the religious people are upset that he's carrying his mat on the Sabbath. (laughs) And this is like another message for another day, but the truth is some people prefer you on your mat. (laughs) And when I think about chapters of my life where I have made a mat a home, and and sometimes, even now, sometimes there's temptation to go back to that. Temptation to care more about what people think than what God thinks. Temptation to start listing all the reasons to God why I'm not adequate, why why I'm not enough. And in those moments, you know, I take a moment and think about it, but then quickly after, I have tasted and I have seen what the Spirit of God can do in my life. And it's the same for you, it's the same for us, that there is real joy available to you this morning. Real peace, real wholeness, real healing. And all you have to do is respond with, yes, I want to be made well, and then partner with God to do the work to be made whole. (laughs) Because he will help you by his grace to be who you have called to be. And in a moment, we're gonna take a minute and I just wanna give those of you in here an opportunity to say yes to Jesus for the very first time. Can we just, all of us in here, just close our eyes? And let's just take a moment, all of us, to have honest evaluation of where we're at. Perhaps some of you are in here this morning and you've gone to thing after thing after thing and you find yourself in here wondering why you still aren't satisfied, wondering why you're still anxious, wondering why you can't get free of this. And can I suggest to you that the only place that you will find freedom is Jesus. (laughs) And perhaps some of you in here, there was a time that you were made well, there was a time that you were walking in freedom, but if you're really honest, and maybe nobody in here knows it, maybe you are a Christian figure in your community, but if you're really honest this morning, you've been going back to your mat, and this morning you need to return to your first love. Return to the one who can make you whole and you feel your heart stirring, you feel the Spirit of God moving. And if that's here, you are here this morning and that's you, and you wanna come back to Jesus or say yes to Jesus for the very first time, would you get up? (laughs) If you need to make Jesus as Lord as your life, we don't wanna rush over this moment or skip over it, would you just stand this morning? You have people who wanna celebrate with you. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, yeah, thank you. Thank you, yeah, thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. There's no one like Jesus. We all stand together this morning. And if you're comfortable, can we all just close our eyes and and lift our hands? There was once a time where we have all been this man. 
And I want you to just remind yourself this morning what God has brought you out of. Come on, remind yourself this morning what he has saved you from. God, we worship you today. Come on, let's just take a moment to behold the King of Kings. God, thank you that you are the living water. God, thank you that there is real healing in the place today. God, thank you for your patience with us, for the times when we choose everything but you. And yet you welcome us back with open arms. Thank you, God, for your compassion. Thank you, God, for your grace. Come on, just begin to thank him for who he has been to you. Thank you that I was once dead to sin and now I am alive in Christ. Thank you that I have the power by the grace of God to get up, pick up my mat, and walk. We will walk this morning in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, may we go into our week being reminded of what God has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. Jesus, we give you the praise this morning. No man deserves the glory but you. (laughs) And we're here today, God, to meet with you. We really wanna see you move. So open our hearts as we worship you.